Hi everybody, I'm Joey. So in this video, it's slightly different uh, for me um, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm using uh, New Zealand native Rimu timber uh, and two, these tables and bench seats have uh, steel legs. There's actually two whole sets I've made up. Uh, why is it slightly different to use the native species for me? Well, Rimu uh, is very popular, was very popular. Everybody knows what it is, but it's actually a um, protected species. There are some uh, forests growing it and sustainably milling it. However, getting really good heartwood, which is the best timber, is quite difficult. Most Rimu available is actually sapwood. Um, this happens to also be not stupendously good heartwood. There's some uh, in this. Um, now this tree was actually felled to make way for a new dorm room for a, a school in Auckland City. And these tables and chairs will be going back into that dorm. Um, so this is that video um, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. So this Rimu tree was felled and milled and then kiln dried all within uh, just a couple of months, maybe, well, probably took three months by the time I actually got the timber. Um, and it's not great, there's some big stress cracks all through it. It was obviously not ready to be milled, it just needed to be got rid of, and the school wanted to do something nice with the timber, so. Uh, it's all a bit wonky, the, the milling wasn't great, or at least the timber moved a heck of a lot, um, I think is the problem afterwards and I run into some issues with that later on. So I'd ask the mill to uh, mill this up at Ruxorn 60 mil and then I could hopefully get about 55 or 50 out of it finished. So I carried on as normal with the milling process. Okay, so my preferred blade for ripping is this uh, huge 14 tooth Linbide uh, rip blade. Uh, if you just straight up want to rip some timber down, this will do it like butter. But because it's got so few teeth, um, the edge is always a little bit furry, the cut edge. And it's not ideal for going straight to glue up. So I have found this Freud, I think it's a 24, it's a 28 tooth ripper and it is actually the, it's actually pretty filthy, uh, it's actually the biggest or the smallest amount of teeth that Freud makes for a ripper as far as I can find. But, um, so it's a little harder to push your timber through but it leaves a much nicer finish and so this is the way I will edge joint my timber up to three meters long um, just run it through on the sliding table and then should have the fence set rip it to the right width and then it's ready straight for blue up So after milling everything up and getting ready to um, domino these together, I started seeing that things just weren't flat anymore. So actually this is the only time I've ever had to re-mill timber because it had moved so much and I can really only put it down to the kiln drying process and everything happening so fast. Um, after this milling it certainly did uh, stay where it was put, so I was able to go back to where I was and uh, domino it together and do the glue ups. Now these are the bench seats um, gluing up two at a time and the tabletops uh, process was exactly the same. Now 
Now for the bench seats, they're about 400 mil wide and they fit through my drum sander quite nicely. Uh, this actually took a long time, however, even with some serious grit. I think I had 80 and 100 grit sandpaper. It still took me most of the day to flatten off the four seats. Uh, and then I could cut them to length and generally uh, finish them up. There were a few voids and cracks and weird things I needed to fill up with epoxy. Just adding a fairly large chamfer on the top and bottom of all the pieces. Now the big tops, uh, however, took a bit more effort to flatten out and uh, sand. So I stood there doing this for quite a while and then stood there sanding for quite a while. And then ended up at the same point as the uh, bench seats. And then time for finish. I'm just using uh, water-based polyurethane, uh, mainly because it is going into the school and it's, this is very hard wearing uh, stuff. So I think it will last really well. that? Some steel legs? Yes, I am no steel worker so I drew up some plans and had a uh, local guy make these up for me, powder coated, much quicker than having to do it all by yourself. So my client wanted a very sleek simple design uh, which is great but the trick, the question is really how do you make something physically strong enough without loads of bracing and things in the way so uh, something that I've come up with um, well, I, well I've come up with it who knows if someone else is doing it but I, I'm adding a very large base plate to the legs which I'm now routing into the bottom of the tabletop uh, and then so that wide base distributes the the load of the legs really nicely and there's zero play in these things when it's all uh, screwed in and tightened up so it's a really good way of making a braceless and stretcherless uh, table design. So I'd actually lost count of how many coats of uh, finish I'd put on these, so I thought I'd do one last coat before delivery. It was pretty tricky getting some final pictures of the tables in place. It was an uh, already occupied dorm, so getting uh, pictures without school kids everywhere was difficult, but I managed to catch a few pics, and everybody was super happy with the finish, so it was good. Alright everyone, see you on the next one.